How's it going guys? We have a medium difficulty question for biochem slash farm for step one. If you know your G protein stuff, this question will be super easy. Otherwise, very recondite and obscure. So overall, medium difficulty, not dramatic. Before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. Really appreciate it. Give the video a like, really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical. Links down below. Find me on Telegram. Links to the Telegram group and channel are down below. Now start the clip. 25 year old man. He's recently started on aripiprazole, which is an atypical antipsychotic. Question wants to know which of the following molecular findings can be seen in this patient, okay? Not dramatic, as I said. So firstly, are we, are we dealing with D1 or D2? We're dealing with D2. So we're only gonna be looking at all these bottom answer choices here. D1 non-existent slash nonsense for you assimilate purposes. In theory, you could be aware that D1 is on renal afferent arterioles and causes dilatation. There's a drug called phenodopam, which can, which is a D1 agonist, which could be used in theory in hypertensive emergencies to help maintain renal blood flow when we're dropping renal perfusion in theory when giving nitroprusside. As I said, nonsense for USMLE. Now, when we deal with the D2 agonism slash antagonism stuff, it says all the psych related stuff. For D2 agonism, these are all wrong fucking answers, okay? D2 agonism is what we want in Parkinson's disease when we don't have enough dopamine, okay? So D2 agonism, lots of drugs, bromocryptine, that's classically used for prolactinoma, actually. Um, drugs like ropinerol, pramipexil can be used for Parkinson, of course, also for restless leg syndrome. Don't want to get crazy tangential right now about restless leg syndrome, but gabapentin's a new first line. Some students are getting hysterical about that. Um, pergolide, okay? So there are other drugs that could be used as D2 agonists. Now, this is what you need to know. As I said, cutting to the chase, because this question can get very fucking confusing very fucking fast, all right? So D2 is... G alpha I G protein. So MAD 2s is the mnemonic. Muscarinic 2, alpha 2, delta 2, or dopamine 2. Okay, so MAD 2s. So that's the mnemonic for G alpha I G protein. G alpha I is going to decrease CAMP if we agonize it. Therefore, if we are antagonizing G alpha I, that means we're antagonizing a G protein that normally decreases CAMP, therefore CAMP goes up. Okay, not traumatic. So answer is going to be D2 antagonist, which makes sense for our drug here, aripiprazole. And then we are going to have an increase in CAMP because we're antagonizing G alpha I. Okay, so the way you can memorize these G proteins, a tip or trick in theory, I move it past, past uh, fail step one now. Okay, so it's not a crisis. But if you want to learn your G protein stuff better, you could just learn the mnemonics. So MAD twos, as I just fucking said, for G alpha I, muscarinic two alpha two, delta two, dopamine two. And then we have for G alpha Q, which normally increases IP3, we have have one or three MMs. So histamine one, alpha one, vasopressin one, muscarinic one, muscarinic three. So if you know those two mnemonics, MAD twos for G alpha I, and then have one or three MMs for G alpha Q, then all the remaining high yield receptors are just G alpha S, okay, such as beta 1, beta 2, histamine 2, vasopressin 2, okay. So G protein stuff, uh, not dramatic, okay, as I've already said like four times, uh, but these questions can occasionally surface on NBME slash USMLA material. You know the deal, I'm going to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. I appreciate your time. That's it.